Hi, everyone. I'm Bablina Babaluka, founder of Awaken Space Media and Education. And today I have with me Matt Galland, who is a serial entrepreneur, author, and the CEO of Bioptimizers and Utopia, which have been two of my favorite companies. And today we're going to talk about how to optimize your performance. So welcome, Matt. It's great to be here. You know, optimizing performance has been an obsession of mine for a very long time. So excited to dive into it. It's been an obsession of mine too. And um, I've been uh, like um, researching these topics for many years and trying different things. Can you give us a little bit more background into what you do and what triggered you to start by optimizers at this company um, for optimizing humans since uh, 2004? Was it that you started this company? Yeah. And I was on the journey well before that. So First of all, I started lifting weights when I was 12, got obsessed with bodybuilding as a teenager, which was a really powerful experience because, you know, the ability to build muscle mass or burn body fat was fascinating because you could just transform your body different ways. But what really got me on this journey was helping my best friend lose 191 pounds in 18 months and seeing the transformation not just physically, but psychologically and emotionally. And then he went from literally being a virgin to being married and seeing that entire metamorphosis was transformative for me. I'm like, okay, that's what I want to do for a living. So I got my degree in kinesiology. I got my degree in the science of physical activity. And then I built two very successful personal training companies, sold those simultaneously. I was studying marketing. I met Wade during that time. Wade was a natural vegetarian bodybuilding champion, which was incredibly yeah. unusual. We're talking almost 20 years, well, talking yeah. 20 years ago. Yeah. I was vegetarian 20 years ago too, so no. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, at that time, nobody was competing in bodybuilding and winning and doing it drug-free. So we decided to uh, to launch some different products to help support natural bodybuilders. And then over time, our passion for health just became an obsession. And we discovered that you know, there's how you look, right? A lot of people look incredible. They've got six pack abs or, you know, whatever their, their features are. However, when you feel incredible, when you are biologically optimized, your sense of well being, your mental performance just goes to another level. And that's really been what we've been hooked on since we started hyperdosing proteolytic enzymes and proteolytic probiotics and things like that. So then we just started creating best-in-class versions of those products. Our first product we ever launched was Masszymes, which is still our second best-selling product. It's the strongest protein-digesting enzyme blend on the market. And um, we just continued to build more and more solutions. We, we pick a, a problem, a health challenge, and then we just do the, the, the research, the work. We have a full-time team in Bosnia, in the Birch University, we have 16 biologists, chemists, PhDs, people with little PhDs in bacteria, doing nonstop experiments with the single goal of creating the most effective, potent versions of our products. So yeah, that's been the journey. And our goal is to help the world become biologically optimized. The goal in our minds that we share internally is that we want to help move longevity to a hundred plus. Like we feel that over the next 20, 30 years, if we can continue educating people, it's, it's not just supplements, right? It's a lot of the health habits, the lifestyle habits. But I think a lot of people could live a much longer, stronger, healthier life. And our goal is to do our part in bringing that to life. I love ideas. And one of the main things I loved about bio-optimizers, because it took me years to discover you, I went through a lot of things. Um, and learning a lot of things. Uh, I'm an educator and I found out this company educates you not only about supplements, about your holistic health, uh, how to eat, how to exercise, how to sleep. And I want to talk about sleep now because um, sleep deprivation is one of the greatest health challenges of the 21st century. And most people really don't, don't realize that this is a health challenge and how important it is to invest in our sleep. I have personal experience from four years ago where I I totally like broke down, broke down and had a burnout. If I see photos and videos of me from four years ago, I thought I looked good and I was healthy, but I felt crap and I had these uh, <laughs> dark circles and 
I took some years uh, working on improving my sleep uh, the past four years. Now I'm fully optimized in my sleep, I believe, but I can learn more from you today. It's great to have you here because you're a sleep expert. So what are the, what are the effects of extended lack of sleep on health and performance? If you can give us some data around, and around the lack of sleep on human health, because people need to realize first, and then we give them some, some hacks and tips. So first of all, the negative impacts of one bad night of sleep or one night of, sorry, deficient sleep is immediate. And they've done the studies looking at the epigenetic triggering that happens. And we're talking about there's triggering of inflammation genes, cancer genes, tumor genes that get turned on from literally one bad night of sleep. And here's a really fascinating stat. So during daylight savings time, when people lose one hour of sleep, heart attacks increase 24% the following day. And during the fall, it goes down 21%. So literally the impact is immediate. Now, of course, over time, if you look at the longevity data on sleep, there's two interesting divergent groups. One is people that sleep six hours or less on average live a shorter life. And then people that sleep 10 hours or more have a shorter life. And I think it's very different mechanisms. Okay. I think the people that are sleeping six hours or less, again, they're just, they're not recovering and they're just compromising their, their, their body over time. But the people that are sleeping 10 hours or more, that's typically a sign that they're unhealthy and their bodies are just trying to recover and trying to sleep more. So what I have noticed is that as people get healthier, they tend to need a little bit less sleep. They might need, you know, from going from eight and a half to maybe seven and a half. So the amount of optimal sleep depends on the person, but I would just say as a general rule, seven to eight and a half is a really good target zone. And there's, there's different variables. So if you train really hard, like I used to, tr to train pro athletes and hockey and, and, and mixed martial arts. Our formula was always eight plus one hour for every hour they train. So if somebody trained two hours a day, we would typically recommend 10 hours. That includes naps. So it's not like 10 hours just at night. So, and I've noticed that with myself, if I'm squatting or deadlifting or just training really hard, I'll need like an additional hour that night typically. But as a general rule, it's all about sleep quality. Okay, so we, we can talk about sleep quantity, but this, I really want to focus our conversation on how to maximize the quality. And we can determine quality by measuring the amount of deep sleep and the amount of REM sleep. Deep sleep is where all the hormonal magic occurs. There's something called a prolactin cycle, which is triggered by melatonin. And again, we'll talk about melatonin because that's the number one sleep supplement, and in my opinion, very few people should be taking it and it should only be taking it in very specific circumstances. But there's a prolactin cycle, which again, growth hormone, testosterone, progesterone, a bunch of different hormones get produced during that time. And if you're not getting that, you're not rejuvenating your body. And obviously your health's going to be impacted by that. And then we have REM sleep, which typically occurs later in the evening, later that night. And that's where there's a lot of emotional processing and a lot of neurotransmitter formation. So your mood and your, basically your mental performance the next day is highly influenced by the quality and the quantity of your REM sleep. And like one of the negative impacts of bad sleep is your hippocampus, which is what stores your short-term memory will be destroyed. And a lot of people that report like my short-term memory, I can't remember things. A lot of that is driven by sleep deprivation. They're just not sleeping enough and their mm -hmm. hippocampus is, is compromised. So that's just the general high level picture of sleep. Again, we really want to maximize the quality. And what I've noticed over time, I used to sleep nine hours a night and wake up feeling groggy and I was dehydrated and there's a, a bunch of issues we can get into. And now I'm sleeping about seven and a half. 
and I'm feeling so much better than I ever did at nine. So again, quantity is not the the only thing. Really, the quality. Actually, of my I wanna I wanna say that I feel the same now. I I used to be at ten hours when I was really tired, burned out, and then I've been working also with what I learned from bio optimizers and what I take for the past few months, and now I'm at seven and a half to eight hours, and I wake up and I feel amazing every day which is great because before I would sleep many hours and then again, I wouldn't feel good. And especially like with the melatonin, I used to take that supplement. I want to maybe touch a bit more, more on that. Um, um, I, I used to take melatonin, but then um, I used to wake up and I would feel a little bit like a zombie. Uh, I, I wasn't feeling rested. Um, before I discovered some other things that I want you to tell us about. So, so I want to ask you first, um, like if somebody, I, I saw some data that 10% of the population is clinically diagnosed with insomnia and 67% of Americans report frequent sleep issues. And I know that most people medicate, uh, a lot of people I know as well. So what would you advise somebody who is not sleeping well, waking up during the night, has trouble falling asleep, might even take medication? Uh, what would you advise them to do and what are some common like sleep disruptors? Let's start from there uh, because a lot of people are in this state. Yeah, so there's a lot of things people should focus on that are foundational. Let, let's start with light. Light is free for the most part. So the there's three different things we can do with light to help improve our sleep. The first thing is when we wake up, the best thing you can do, which will improve your sleep that evening, is literally go outside and get 10 to 20 minutes of sunlight directly into your eyes. You know, go for a walk, just move around. And you're, of course, the movement will also improve your metabolism. That's a whole different point, but it also increases your serotonin and your dopamine for the day. So mm -hmm. the, to me, the morning movement in sunlight is one of the biggest returns on investment that anyone can do in terms of health habits. Like, you know, I used to get sun kind of middle of the day and now I've shifted it to earlier in the morning and it's way more impactful. It really transforms your entire morning. So that's one. And what that does is that it signals to your brain that that's the beginning of the day. Light and darkness are signals that tell our body when to start and stop certain circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are these biological clocks that we have that basically run certain biological processes. So the light in the morning is the first key trigger. Now, for those of you listening that live in brutal cold climates, like I used to in, in Canada, I live in Panama now, for that reason, I don't like cold, you can use blue light glasses, there's a company called Retimer, or blue light panels, the point is you need to shine blue light right into your eyes within about 30 minutes upon awakening, and if anybody wants to become a morning person and shift their, their clock, that's the way to do it, you know, wake up earlier shine your, your face with blue light. And then you'll notice that you'll be tired earlier in the evening. And then you can go to bed earlier and then wake up earlier. So that's one. Two is about 90 minutes before your target bedtime. And, and this is a key concept. You want a target bedtime. Most people, you know, they're watching TV, they're binging a show or they're doing something and they don't have a target bedtime. And we can talk about sleep consistency because that is another sleep disruptor. We'll talk about cortisol in a minute, but ideally you've got a target bedtime. We can talk about chronotypes as well, but whatever your target bedtime, let's say it's 11 PM, about 90 minutes before that, let's say at 9 30, you want to start turning off the lights in your environment. So you can dim them or turn them off, or you can wear blue light blocking glasses, which will also help diminish the lumens, the light that's impacting your eyes. Why is that critical? Because darkness is another signal, it's another circadian rhythm signal for melatonin. Light destroys melatonin. So mm -hmm. for anybody that is taking melatonin, here's, here's the way you don't do it. If you take melatonin, let's say the lights are on, literally that melatonin will be destroyed second by second. Within minutes, that melatonin is, is completely destroyed. So the way to take melatonin, and I don't recommend people do, 
is you you have it next to your bed on your bed stand. Lights are off. You take your melatonin, and then you'll get a much better uh, effect than if you take it with the lights on. And the third thing about light is you want absolute pitch black darkness. And of course, for those of us that live in a city, you need pitch black. You know, you need uh, blackout curtains. I have two layers of blackout curtains. I don't want to see a single piece of light on top or on the bottom, and I literally cannot see my hand at night. So it's I've just covered the entire. Um, room so that I can't see anything. So because I used to wear a sleep mask and the sleep masks are problematic for two reasons. One is that it'll increase the temperature in your of your head. And all the sleep research says you want your head to be about one degree cooler than your body. And that can be challenging if you're wearing a sleep mask. The second issue is that your skin has photoreceptors. So even if you're blocking the light from your eyes, if there's light hitting your neck and your face, it will disrupt your melatonin cycle, which has been shown clinically. So that's the first one, which is, again, relatively free to do and is just controlling light. Great. Um, so I've been I've been doing most of these things. Thank God I live on an island, uh, a sunny island. So <laughs> I try to get my, my sunshine in the morning as well. Um, if if you would uh, give us some evening rituals mm -hmm. uh, for people to do, I mean, you gave you gave some of them. I want you to also like talk about the magnesium because I've been taking the bioptimizers magnesium, uh, and I, I sleep like a baby ever since I take it. Um, and GABA, uh, which are two ingredients you use in your products. I mean, mm -hmm. GABA does something else. I mean, magnesium is soft that it, I don't like soft and gentle and I sleep and I wake up and GABA when I take it I just feel it immediately I just need to go like I switch off I go to bed I wake up refreshed so can you talk about these 20 if you include them in your morning in your evening rituals and who needs to include them and why and in general what are your evening rituals that you will recommend to me to for a sleep faster and optimize my sleep yeah so again Let's talk about a couple of other sleep disruptors, and I'm going to answer your question by talking about those. Mm -hmm. So we have a nervous system which has two different sides to it. One is sympathetic, which is its purpose is to activate us. It's fight, flight, freeze. It's, you know, like right now we're in a sympathetic mode. It helps us function. It's a high functioning mode. And then we have parasympathetic, which is rest and relax. And obviously when we're wanting to fall asleep and wanting to sleep, we need to be in parasympathetic. So the reason magnesium is so effective to improve sleep is one is it's, it's the one mineral with some other ones we can talk about, but it's the biggest key mineral for shifting your nervous system over to parasympathetic. That alone, it'll improve your sleep. Again, a lot of people have a hard time downshifting their nervous system and their brains. And obviously that's one thing, but let's talk about the brain because one of the big sleep disruptors is that people cannot downshift their brains from a high beta brainwave state down to alpha and down to theta. And then if they can't do that, their sleep's going to be compromised. So let's talk about brain waves real, really quick. And I've spent eight weeks of my life with electrodes doing neurofeedback which is an incredible modality for, for people that are insomniacs. Again, always consult your doctor. This is not medical advice, but the research shows that a lot of people that are insomniacs have hyperactive beta brainwaves. And that's not surprising if you understand what beta brainwaves are and what they do. So there are supplements you can take that will help increase alpha brainwaves and diminish your beta brainwaves. One is called L-theanine. L-theanine has been my favorite go-to supplement for sleep and for relaxation for probably six or seven years. I mean, it's just been a, a staple for me. 200 milligrams does an incredible job. It's an amino acid. It's derived from green tea. And it's the reason why a lot of people can't handle coffee, but they love green tea, right? The green tea is a much smoother caffeine ride. And what I love about L-theanine is that it promotes relaxation without drowsiness. And back to one of your earlier questions, you mentioned sleep drugs. 
one of the big problems with sleep drugs is that you're going to wake up drowsy. You're going to wake up with a hangover. And as we were formulating sleep breakthrough, our main objective really was how we felt in the morning. We wanted to, of course, fall asleep fast, stay asleep, get really good quality sleep. But the subjective experience we wanted is that when we woke up, we felt rejuvenated and we've achieved that. And a lot of the sleep molecules we played with, we did 55 prototypes, would help us fall asleep and stay asleep, but we'd wake up with that hangover that we just didn't want. Mm -hmm. Back to GABA, the other benefit of GABA is that it increases alpha brain waves. So the L-theanine and the GABA increases alpha, which helps decrease beta, and it just starts priming your brain for sleep. So in terms of sleep rituals, ideally, again, 90 minutes before you start turning off the lights, one hour before, that's when you take your magnesium breakthrough and your sleep breakthrough. You want to feed your body all of the precursors, and precursors means building blocks, and cofactors, and cofactors means they help transform those building blocks into the target molecule. Again, the, the mistake with melatonin is that when you take an exogenous form of a hormone, and melatonin is a hormone, your body will start down-regulating the melatonin receptors, and that means you need to take more and more and more. People are mega dosing melatonin. Your brain will naturally produce about 10 to 80 micrograms per night. And even if you're taking one milligram of melatonin, that's a thousand micrograms, which is a, like more than 10 times what your brain would naturally produce. The other issue with melatonin is that some of us, a very large percentage of the population, myself included, will wake up two or three hours before our target wake up time, which is obviously not ideal. What happens is our, our body temperature will spike again two or three hours earlier, and then we wake up and we're on with our day and then we'll get tired later on. So I've never liked melatonin. If you are going to use melatonin, literally like a hundred micrograms is all that I would recommend using. And the only way to do that is with like a spray or something like that. But people are just overdosing in my opinion on melatonin and it just becomes less and less effective. And if you look at the research on melatonin, it helps you fall asleep but your sleep quality is is not improved. And again, with a lot of people, it's severely compromised. It's worse. Yeah. So I just want to mention for people who don't know, because I'm taking these products and I've tested the sleep breakthrough is new and I just tested it and it's amazing. Uh, it includes all the supplements you mentioned and some more, uh, the, the L-theanine, the GABA, the magnesium, uh, one of the forms of magnesium, two of the, sorry, one of the forms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yep. And then the magnesium breakthrough in, uh, includes all forms of magnesium, which I find is helpful for me. I had a, an injury, it helps with my muscles, with a lot of other things as well. Um, so, so, these uh, supplements, some people, um, when I talk about supplements, they say, what is the research? Uh, do we really need that stuff? And there is research on medication and they go and take the medication or they don't believe in supplements. Do you have some studies, research that you have done that you can mention? Because people can improve the quality of their life and their health so much in natural ways, because I know I have studied your products and they're so clean and most of them are vegan, like the sleep breakthrough is vegan, the magnesium breakthrough as well. Um, so can you refer to maybe some, some studies that people want to know because they're afraid to take these things that can improve their like, the quality of their life and their health so much? Yeah, first of all, if you, if you go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash Pavlina, you'll see all kinds of references at the bottom. I mean, when we formulate products, we'll spend months reading research on every potential molecule in that arena. So I'll, I'll give you some, some different highlights. So one is with magnesium, magnesium bisglycinate has the best sleep data and it was clinically shown in 2012 to increase melatonin levels. And mm -hmm. that's our strategy. Again, our strategy is Let's give our body the building blocks. And magnesium is a precursor, again, a building block for serotonin. And serotonin is a building block for melatonin. So anything we can do to increase serotonin, 
is going to be beneficial for sleep. And again, magnesium bisglycinate has the best data. Now let's talk about cofactors. So again, in our lab, we've been doing hundreds and hundreds of experiments on different things. And one of the big ones that's just blown all of us away has been cofactors because you can multiply the effectiveness of a molecule by adding the right cofactor, which helps it transform. So P5P, which is a bioactive form of vitamin B6, is a great cofactor for magnesium. But back to research, let's talk about different sleep minerals and the data that, again, backs up their effectiveness. When well, we were diving into... Yeah, go ahead. I hate minerals because uh, personally, I found out four years ago, I have clients who are doctors, have PhDs in alternative medicine, and we ran some, te some tests for a, years, for a year. And I was severely deficient in vitamins, minerals, even though I was taking supplements and I thought I was eating healthy. I was severely deficient in many minerals, amino acids, everything. And I also found out I was taking supplements, but the quality of the supplements is very important as well. I was taking some things that were not like, you know, doing uh, uh, the work. Um, so, so what is the importance of this for the body and why should we supplement, especially after a certain age, I feel we get more and more depleted. If you can talk about that because people don't realize that we get depleted, especially as we get older. Yeah. So that's a core tenant of biological optimization. You want the optimal amount and quality of nutrients in your body at all times. The challenge is that, you know, in the past, you know, maybe 70, 80 plus years ago, the soil was nutrient rich, rich. And of course, due to commercial farming practices, the soil has just been gradually depleted over time. And there's a, a ton of data proving that. And it's just getting worse and worse. So even if you go and you buy something that's organic, organic only means that it wasn't sprayed with, sprayed with fungicides, herbicides, and pesticides. It doesn't mean that it's nutrient rich. I'll give you one example that blew my mind. I won't name the store, but a friend of mine went to the biggest grocery chain in Florida. And there's something called the BRICS, B-R-I-X. BRICS allows you to measure the nutrient richness of fruits and vegetables. You literally grab a piece of fluid, you put it in this almost looks like a, like a magnifying glass kind of device. And then you can see, and it'll give you a number. Everything was zero, zero which was just unbelievable. It means basically all, all you were getting was macronutrients. You were just getting, you know, a little bit of, of carbs and sugars and fiber, um, maybe a little bit of amino acids, but it's basically devoid in micronutrients. So it's almost impossible to get the ideal amount of micronutrients that your body needs. Now, I'm just going to make a generalization here and ideally, again, get blood work like you did and see where you're deficient because another big challenge with deficiencies is mutations. So when we look at genetic variants, some of us have genetic variants that make it difficult to methylize and maintain certain nutrient levels. Like vitamin B12 is a very uh, well-known one. Like some people just need to literally inject themselves with vitamin B12 to maintain an optimal level. So again, ideally work with a really educated doctor that understands genetics, that can look at your genes, that you do blood work, and then you really make some precise recommendations. But one generalization I can make is that most people have enough vitamins. I'm just generalizing. Some people are deficient, but they're sorely deficient in certain key minerals. So there's a much bigger imbalance on the mineral side than on the vitamin side. And a lot of food is fortified with vitamins. So again, most people are okay on the vitamin front, but are sorely deficient in minerals. Magnesium is a really big one. It is hard to get enough magnesium from food. It's almost impossible in general. So you need to basically supplement with it. But let's talk about one of the more fascinating pieces of, of research I found when we were deep diving in all the data, which was potassium. So they were doing this brain research on mutant flies like flies, the flies that fly. <laughs> and what they found is that sodium excites the brain, it excites neurons, and potassium quiets them down. And that was a major revelation. And Mark Effinger uh, is our chief product officer, and he's the guy that said, 
we need to put potassium in sleep breakthrough. And I wasn't aware of the effects on neurons. It also helps slow down your heart rate a little bit. It's, it's a really powerful mineral. And most people are, have a major imbalance between sodium and potassium. Again, people are, are definitely not deficient in sodium. It's in everything. People love salt and salt's a beautiful thing, but people are just not taking enough potassium throughout the day. And I've been keto for like 25 plus years. And when I increased my potassium levels, it was one of the most impactful things I did. And I can, it's only a new, relatively new revelation to me that it can really help with sleep. The next mineral is calcium. So of course we've, our, and a lot of our grandmothers have t told us, hey, drink a glass of warm milk before bed. Well, it turns out she was right because the calcium does imp help improve REM. And it also it's a cofactor for tryptophan, which is another amino acid to convert into serotonin and melatonin. So calcium is a really powerful sleep mineral. And then there's magnesium, which we talked about. And the magnesium is a cofactor for the calcium, the potassium, and then finally there's zinc. So zinc is a powerful melatonin cofactor, and it also calms the nervous system. So those four minerals are really the four key minerals you need for preparing your brain and your body for a great night's sleep. And I was deficient in everything and, and you have everything in sleep breakthrough, uh, the new, the new product, which I want to talk about at, at the end, but I want to ask you a couple of more like quick questions. Um, mm -hmm. The one is, uh, since we're talking about biohacking and optimizing health, we talked about sleep a lot. What are your top three to five daily health hacks to optimize your mental and physical energy and be a high performer in your business. We have a lot of high performers here on my channel, business owners. Um, so what are your top three to five daily health hacks? You mentioned some, but if you would summarize like what you do during the day, um, mm -hmm. that would be great. Yeah, so one is obviously the, the wake up ritual and you're really hitting two or three things there. But actually, let me rewind. Before I do that, I typically wake up and do about 10 minutes of, of meditation. So something I'm, I've, I try to do about the first 20, 30 minutes is stay in an alpha state. We talk about brain waves, but I don't turn my phone off airplane mode. I usually meditate. I'll do a little bit of red light therapy, uh, spend a little bit of time with my baby daughter. She's uh, almost seven months old now. And just get some oxytocin from that, which, you know, oxytocin, some serotonin. Try to keep my brain in a calm state, which to me changes the entire day. So that and the walk really sets the tone for my entire day. Uh, like from a neurochemical perspective, again, I'm getting serotonin, I'm getting dopamine, I'm getting oxytocin, and that just transforms your entire perspective on life. So that's one. Two is nootropic. So you mentioned Utopia. Utopia has just been you know, one of the biggest performance game changers I've ever experienced. I was playing with Nootropics for a long time, but when I met Mark Effinger, aka Mr. Newts, his formulations are just on a different level. So typically I wake up, I'll look at my calendar. For example, today I saw that we're doing a podcast at this time and I optimize my neurochemistry for this moment. So I'll, I'll look at my calendar and figure out, okay, which stack, which nootropics do I need? So I took a brain flow and I'm drinking some Nectar X right now. So that's, that's a really important piece of it. Another big one that's kind of surprised me is micro movements throughout the day. Mm -hmm. We've all heard like sitting is the new smoking. That was a big story a few years ago. That's not quite accurate. Not moving is the new smoking or not changing positions is the new smoking. It's not like you want to be standing all day. So like I, right now I have, I'm on my stand up desk, I'll cycle back and forth. And what happens if you don't move starting at about the 30 minute mark and it gets gradually worse and worse. And by the two hour mark, you're compromised. So if you don't move for two hours, let's say you're just sitting on the couch, you'll, you'll feel good for maybe the first 30 minutes, maybe 60, but by the two hour mark, you're, energy is dropping, your biological energy is starting to diminish. The cool thing is you can move for literally two minutes and fix that. So it's something I've become really 
cognizant of is, is how's my biological movement and energy. And it doesn't take much, a set of push-ups, a set of squats, walking up and down a flight of stairs, rebounding, yeah, wh whatever form of movement, do a dance, put on your favorite song, dance for one song, uh, which will also improve your neurochemistry. That's a game changer. Just doing that two or three times throughout the day will improve your baseline energy, probably 10, 20%. And then all of the sleep hacks, all of the sleep rituals is is how you know I finish my day. So that's, that's those are the the foundational ones that I've been using for a long time. And I would say, and this is not on a daily basis, but on a yearly basis, the number one thing is neurofeedback. So again, I've I've been to BioCybernaut or Dave Asprey's facility multiple times. I've done like eight weeks of brain training. Just did one a few weeks ago. Um, my goal is to do twice a year for the rest of my life because the gains are so significant in cognitive mental performance, diminishing reactivity, increasing EQ, increasing brain speed, the ability to handle more and more weight, like every single parameter that you want as a high performer, in my opinion, improves with neurofeedback. So that's not something you do daily, but certainly a couple times a year or even once a year, it's, it's transformative. I haven't heard anyone doing it in my country, Cyprus. If anyone is watching this interview and knows about somebody in Cyprus, comment below. But that's that's interesting. So that's brain training, neurofeedback. Yeah, so you have electrodes on your head. Mm -hmm. And they, they're giving you like near real-time feedback on what's happening in your brain. We have no, very few people have awareness of what's happening in your brain. Mm -hmm. The way to look at your brain is it'd be like working out in a pitch black room with no mirrors. So, you know, if I go say, hey, I want you to do this really complicated exercise and I put you in a pitch black room, you can't see anything. It's very difficult for you to learn. And when, when we tell people go meditate, that's essentially what we're doing. I mean, mm -hmm. we give them pointers, hey, focus on your breath or focus on your body. And those are, are helpful hints. But ultimately, it's a fraction of the learning speed that you can achieve if your brain is getting a real-time feedback. So for an example, if you want to train your alpha brain waves, you set the, the machine, the software to give you feedback when your brain is heading in the right direction. As it's increasing alpha, you will be getting positive reinforcement and your brain says, oh, you want me to do more of that? Okay, great, I'm learning. And it's self-learning every single second. So the speed of learning with neurofeedback compared to normal meditation, I don't have an exact number, but it feels like 100x. It's, it's exponential. And then you can train things like theta or gamma and then some other types of neurofeedback where you're literally training the interconnectivity of the hubs in your brain and you're making them work better and faster and that you're getting a real-time score on your brain's performance and if that number is going up your brain has gone to another level it's it's undeniable it'd be the equivalent of lifting more weights in the gym if you can do that you're stronger right so it's really fascinating technology and it's just going to get better and better and it's it's really exciting well that that's the next thing on my list to try <laughs> <laughs> if uh, if I don't find it locally, I will have to come to the US and uh, and you point me in the right direction. I know that you collaborate also with Dave Asprey and you go to his, uh, you speak at his conferences, but my favorite biohacker is Mr. Nutz, Mark Effinger. <laughs> And he's he's on my channel. The first time I talked to him, he wasn't doing so many interviews. And I said, you should be out there. You're better than Dave Asprey. <laughs> so now he's doing more. So I'm, it's great to see him uh, doing the interviews and putting the knowledge out there. So um, a great advice. So um, the Sleep Breakthrough is your new product. And you gave mm -hmm. me a link sleepbreakthrough.com slash Pavlina. I also have a, a discount code Pavlina10. If you want to get 10% off, uh, go to sleepbreakthrough.com slash Pavlina. I will link it under the video, including other products that I love from this company. Definitely the Magnesium Breakthrough is like my basic recommended product. And Utopia is, is the limitless pill. It, it is. And it has helped me recover so much from so many things that... 
have been going on in my life the past few years and now I feel limitless again like not like a lot more than before I found myself and I'm stronger so I highly recommend everything uh can you tell us a bit more about the sleep breakthrough and why did you develop it um I mean you you said uh some things before you mm-hmm. described some of the ingredients but who for whom this product is for is it for everyone is it for people who have um you know sleep issues and how do we take it I think it's for everyone so first of all there's obviously people that are severely struggling with sleep those people definitely you know will love this formula and, and appreciate it but you know the the cool thing about biohackers is we know there's another level mm-hmm. We always know there's another level. And Wade and I have been on this journey, and Mr. Newt, Mark Heffinger, we were seeking the next level. Like, you know, there's there's always another level of brain performance, of health, of sleep. And if you take your sleep from okay to good or good to great, it will transform your life. Like the superhuman version of yourself is when you're getting enough high quality sleep, you know, for a few nights in a row. It's if you're getting 90 minutes of deep, two hours of REM on a consistent basis, your performance, your cognitive performance, your mood, you're going to be just a better version of yourself for your family, for your friends, for your business. And, you know, we did talk about this earlier, but they've done research on body fat and muscle gain. So on the body fat front, they took two groups. One group slept eight and a half hours. The other group slept five and a half. The group that slept only five and a half lost 60% less fat and 55% more muscle mass. So whether your goal is to get burn body fat or build muscle mass or improve your cognitive performance, in my opinion, better sleep is the number one thing to invest in. So how do you take it? It's a drink. It's a beautiful blue, delicious drink. We flavored it with spirulina, which is an amazing, that's a legit superfood. It actually helps stem cell, natural stem cell stimulation. We've sweetened it with stevia and an organic grape and organic berry. And then again, it's a beautiful blue drink. You drink that about one hour before bed. One of the things we didn't talk about is glycine. It has three grams of glycine. So glycine is an incredible amino acid that almost everyone's deficient in. It is definitely one of the most powerful amino acids for sleep. It will actually help lower your body temp. It increases REM. But here's my favorite part about glycine. Again, this is all from the literature. In that if you don't get enough sleep, the next day, you're going to feel a lot better. And I've definitely noticed that with sleep breakthrough. Of course, you know, if I'm traveling and things, I might only get five and a half or six hours of sleep. But with sleep breakthrough, I feel so much better than I ever did before when Mm -hmm. I'm sleep deprived which to me, that alone is an absolute game changer. So I love that. We talked about the magnesium, the potassium, the calcium, the zinc. Just to wrap up on GABA, we tested a very wide variety of different types of GABA from valerian root to traditional GABA. We settled on pharma GABA because we thought and felt that it was the strongest. And if you look at the research and the data on pharma GABA versus normal GABA, Pharma GABA is more effective. So that's the form that we selected. Things like valerian root just lasted too long in the body and we felt groggy in the morning. So that's why we didn't go with that. And then finally, we got L theanine. So it's a super clean formula. There's no colorants, there's no chemicals. It's basically all minerals, amino acids, and just natural flavoring. That's it. And again, you drink it about one or one hour before bed. You'll start feeling it 15 minutes later. Within 30 to 45 minutes, you're going to want to go to bed. And then again, keep the lights dim, go to bed and enjoy a great night's sleep. And that's it. Well, I second everything you said, um, because uh, for years, like I said, I've tried every single supplement in the market. Here in Cyprus, we get supplements from the pharmacy. My mother is also, it's an alternative healer. She has collaborations with many companies. So I've tried everything. I always used to take some sleep supplements from time to time when I was stressed. This is a different level. It's a different level. And all the substances, they're good for rejuvenating the body. So you wake up and you're healthier. Your immune system is better. Like I haven't haven't gotten sick (laughs) 
since I, I'm taking these supplements um, and I feel so much stronger. So uh, thank you for, for the products you have created. I'm very happy I have discovered your company. I'm looking forward to seeing more of what you do. I'm constantly getting educated. I have so much more to learn from your company because you send so much material. There's so many courses, books. I haven't gone through everything yet, but it's a journey. And it's a journey of self-growth and self-improvement because if we don't have our health, we don't have anything, really. So uh, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. So uh, for, for anyone that wants to test these products, libbreakthrough.com slash Pavlina, code Pavlina10 for your 10% uh, discount and find all, all the links under this video. And looking forward to seeing you maybe at one of the biohacking events you and Wade you speak at around the world. Um, again, that's the next adventure I want to take. Yeah. First of all, every product we have is protected by the best guarantee in the health supplement industry, which is a unconditional one year, 365 day, no questions asked money back guarantee. So you can try the products. If it doesn't work, we'll give you every single penny back. Our refund rate is also one of the lowest in the industry and our product ratings is one of the highest. So again, our products work, you're protected. Don't worry, just give it a shot and try it out. And then next year, here, here's some hints of what's coming. One is we have been recreating and rebuilding all of our digestive enzyme formulas. They're going to be stronger than ever. So that's going to start being released early next year. Really excited about that. And then we're also working on some really exciting women's health formulas. I'll just leave it at that, but we've got multiple things and we've got new people we're working with and we're really, really excited. So probably by middle of next year, you'll start seeing some of these products come out. Amazing, because I have been concerned about, you know, women's health uh, and I had some health issues in the, the past. So I know that I need to take probiotics. Uh, the digestive enzymes are great as well. So, so I'm looking forward to see what you will create because everything I have taken has helped me improve on, on every level. So thank you. Thank you for your time. It was great having you. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, Pleasure to be here. Thank you. Bye for now. Take care.